Your email list is an awesome way to just further heighten that connection to the content that you've already worked so hard on. And it can also be a way to reinvigorate and remind your people about what you've created in the past, what's already available to them. Hey, my name is Jenna Kutcher, and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing numbers, and helping you to navigate both the messy and the magical seasons of this thing called life. I'm a small town mama who took a $300 camera, grew a successful photo biz, and now I work from home and run a seven figure online business. I teach you the tried and true secrets to building a career you adore. Shy away from the real talk? (laughs) No way. Money, hardship, growth, loss, and marketing are all topics we discuss here. Think of this as your one stop shop for happy hour with a gal pal mixed with business school. Pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. Email marketing. Yes, I am not done with my obsession. I've actually been thinking a lot about email lists and not only why you need one, but what you should send once you have one. I like to think of communicating with my email list kind of like sitting down for a happy hour with my girlfriends, complete with my favorite spicy margaritas and some heart filling conversation, maybe a killer meat and cheese board and effortless comfort, encouragement, honesty, and of course, laughter. You know that I love social media. I love it, but I don't even think that serving an email list can compare. If email marketing is this cozy happy hour, then social media is more like a crowded cocktail party with 100 people. You probably meet and mingle and chit chat with some, but not all in attendance. You share some light appetizers and more surface level conversation with the crowd. And then you just go home feeling a little bit more tired than filled up. Now, listen. I love me a good cocktail party. Mama knows how to get down, but those cozy happy hours with my gal pals are filled with way more connection and uplifting dialogue and the special memories and conversations that I remember for years. There's nothing wrong with the cocktail party, but it definitely serves a different purpose than those more intimate happy hours. Am I right? Now, I know maybe it's a stretch to compare one to email lists and the other to social media, but it helps me when I'm creating for each platform to notice their different purposes. Social media can certainly be a vessel for vulnerability and connection, but it's much more public and even sometimes performative. Email, on the other hand, is just me showing up solo to say, hey, inside of somebody's inbox to deliver value or offer a supportive word. It's this private conversation that makes it automatically feel more personal. That's the massive value of having an email list and showing up for them ideally every week or every other week. And today I want to talk about how to serve your email list in ways that nurture support and provide value to them. Let me first say up front what this episode is not focusing on, and it is not focusing on ways to sell to your email list. We've all heard the stats about how every $1 spent on email marketing equates to about $44 made in return. We know that email marketing is the way to sell and see big profits. And I have tons of content that covers how to do that well. But one of the keys for success in selling to your email list has nothing to do with selling or even talking about your offer. It's those in-between seasons when you're not in a launch or pushing for a sale that you form these strong bonds and lasting relationships with your list through serving them. And yet so many people forget about their email list until they have something they need to communicate about a new product or offer, and there's some sort of urgency in making that sale. Let's not make that mistake any longer. You've got to serve them to earn your right to sell. You don't need intricate 1,000 word educational or empowering emails each and every week. In fact, most times the shorter and the simpler, the better in the world of email. I intentionally focus on showing up to serve and support my email list 80 to 90% of the time and then spend the rest of that time sharing offers and inviting them to take action. Without the serving piece, we would not be able to get the incredible results that we get through email marketing. I think of it as kind of earning the right to sell by showing that I'm committed to my audience's journey and providing helpful, uplifting, and valuable content the majority of the time, followed up with aligned offers that meet you exactly where you're at. And this isn't just something that I can do. You can do it too. Let's get into the five main formats for serving your email list and being a valued resource in their inbox, not just another salesperson. Here we go. We are jumping in. 
Ready to start or grow your email list with a female founded email service provider doing email marketing right? Start a free 30 day trial plus get 50% off your monthly subscription at jennacutcher.com slash flowdesk. That's jennacutcher.com slash F L O D E S K. If you want to get more dream customers on your website and into your funnels, you'll want to dive into the new book from my dear friend, Russell Brunson, ASAP. Get a free copy of his book, Just Cover the Shipping at jktrafficsecrets.com. That's jktrafficsecrets.com. Number one, resource roundups. Maybe you have something that you're obsessed with, items you can't live without, creators you love to follow and learn from, podcasts you can't stop listening to, blogs you keep on reading. A resource roundup is a great excuse to hit your email list with links to all the things that you love. In 2020, especially, resource roundups have been a major way to show up for your people because it seems like this year, more than any other before, we're learning and starting to understand on a deeper level that we just don't know what we don't know. Rounding up content, links, or items allows you the opportunity to invite in other voices and resources outside of your own to point to other people in your community who are experts in topics that you're simply not an expert in. Sharing the spotlight in this way can fill holes in your content that you're just simply unable to speak to. Different experiences, walks of life, educational information, and helpful answers that you just don't have. It all points your subscribers to voices that can authentically cover what you can't and helps them further their learning and growth and by answering questions they might be having without you having to step in as an educator. Now, as an educator myself, this has been such a valuable lesson in this season to step back, get quiet and listen and learn alongside my audience while other experts step in to teach. A good way to choose whose work to share is to ask yourself what you want and need to be learning about right now. What resources are you personally investigating and digging into? It's likely that your people would be interested in that same sort of content matter. You can share how and why you're digging into the materials and then just point to the resources and let them do the talking and the teaching. Now, number two is my favorite encouragement. I don't know if anyone else has subscribed to Letters from the Universe. I have been for years. I am. And I swear that those words hit me right when I need them the most. They're literally just these daily emails that are just a few sentences each and every day of straight truth, encouragement, and honesty. And I don't know how, but they always feel timely and like this breath of fresh air. That brings me to the next way that you can be serving your list. And one of my favorite ways is through words of encouragement that you wish someone could whisper into your own life. Spread that same message of encouragement to your email list because the truth is that life can be really, really heavy and hard. We're often so stuck in our own little worlds, hustling to make things happen, pushing ourselves to do more and be better and faster and do bigger things. And quite honestly, even though we have cherished relationships in our lives, so many of us don't hear simple words of encouragement often enough. Things like, hey, you're doing a good job. Or you are worthy of your successes and you are more than your mess ups. A failure doesn't mean your path is finished or you deserve rest. You are not defined by how you look, how much money you make or what you achieve. Taking care of you, it's a non-negotiable. What do you need today to feel more joy? What can you let go of to feel more peace? How can you prioritize your mental health this week? Who can you call to catch up with? There are so many small yet significant reminders that we as humans crave and need spoken into our lives. And let's be real, seeing a quote on Instagram or Pinterest, it can give us warm fuzzies, but hearing it from someone we admire and look up to can be so much more powerful and life-giving. Partner encouragement with a personal story, and it will not only encourage anyone who opens your email, but it will also help create connection and invite engagement through your honesty and your openness. My encouragement emails do so well, and I think it's because I think about what I'm personally going through in real time, what I wish someone was saying to me, and how I can communicate that in an email form. It's this authentic connection of giving people this warm hug and comforting word, but via a digital message in their inbox. Convey what's on your heart in the most honest way possible, and you'll speak life and truth into your audience's lives. Number three is content roundups. 
Now, if you're in a creation slump or maybe the opposite, you're hitting publish quicker than you can promote, another fantastic and actually pretty easy way to show up serving your email list is through content roundups that revive your old content. Point to things that you've already created that are still relevant in the current times or are otherwise helpful to your audience in this season. Hopefully, you're in the practice of creating evergreen content on your blog or social media. That means content that can live on for months or even years and doesn't speak to certain timelines, dates, or seasons. If you consistently blog about certain topics, you can even pull a handful of resources covering that same topic and list them in an email so people can pick and choose what they need or want to learn about. Think of it as sort of sending out a directory that takes that search factor away from your followers and quickly connects them to what they need. Redirecting to your past resources gets your subscribers in the know and it positions you further as this expert in your field. So many times people don't see our social posts or they might be new to your brand. And even though you might feel like you've already shared something a bunch already, it's likely always getting in front of new eyes each and every time you reshare it. Your email list is an awesome way to just further heighten that connection to the content that you've already worked so hard on. And it can also be a way to reinvigorate and remind your people about what you've created in the past, what's already available to them. I used to send out a weekly visual email every single week, and truthfully, I should probably get back into that practice where I'd round up everything that we published for the week from the podcast to the blog to social media, and it just gave people a chance to dive into what they might have missed. Don't be afraid to share old blog posts, point to valuable social posts from years past, or list out content that's relevant and still applicable today. You can and should be repurposing as much as possible. And the bonus is, is that it saves you from constantly feeling pressure to churn out and drive traffic to brand new content. I've got a book recommendation for you. I'm so excited about this book for a hundred reasons, but let me put this simply. If you want to get more people on your website and into your funnel, snag a free copy of Traffic Secrets by my friend Russell Brunson at jktrafficsecrets.com. Just cover shipping and the book and the knowledge are all yours. Now this book, it's incredible. And I'm not just saying that because there's an entire chapter inside of it inspired by me, I promise. If you want the strategies and methods that Russell has perfected for bringing more more traffic to your platforms, get this book. I even give away some of my Instagram growth secrets in chapter number 10. So I want for you to get your hands on it, get a free copy of this book, just cover the shipping at jktrafficsecrets.com. Russell combined years of research plus his incredible traffic secrets to get more eyeballs and more dream customers onto your site and into your funnels. This book is free, just cover the shipping. If you head to my link, jktrafficsecrets.com. If you're ready to start and grow your email list or your list is already growing and you're fed up with your current provider, you need Flowdesk. Use my link to get half off of your subscription. That's $19 a month for life at jennacutcher.com slash Flowdesk. The female founders, Martha and Rebecca, saw all the issues in the email world and decided to do something about it. The result is Flowdesk, an easy to use, intuitive and beautiful solution to email marketing. I've heard it all before when it comes to starting and growing an email list. No time to learn graphic design. What do you even say to your list? How do I get opt-ins on my site so people even want to join in the first place? I don't have a website, let alone a list. You don't need to learn how to be a copywriter and graphic designer and website developer to start and grow your email list. Flowdesk includes beautifully designed templates, many with pre-written copy that you can use and adapt for your brand's voice. You can create forms and pop-ups for opt-ins, even if you don't have a website yet, plus behind-the-scenes insights to track your progress and your email success. You'll have unlimited everything. There's no subscription tier. It's all yours from day one so that you can learn, grow, implement, and market to your list for just $19 a month. No limits, no lock templates, all of the features you need to grow and serve your email list. Your monthly subscription is $19 a month if you sign up at jennacutcher.com slash flowdesk. That's jennacutcher.com slash F-L-O-D-E-S-K. Number four is exclusive content. Now, one of the best ways to grow and serve your email list is through exclusive content that people cannot get anywhere else. Maybe you publish a password protected video or you have a blog post that only your insiders get access to. Or maybe you record a free training or an extra episode that you're keeping for your VIPs or you have a pre-sale or a coupon code for something that you're working on. 
serving your email list with content, information, or inspiration that the general public cannot access is a huge way to not only grow your email list, but to build up that excitement of opening your emails. It doesn't matter what medium you use to deliver this exclusive content. The goal is, is that it's something special and extra and that people need to be a part of your community in the inboxes in order to enjoy it. This also gives you an excuse to hype up your email list, to drop breadcrumbs on what the exclusive content is, and explain why it's important for people to join it. Because let's be honest, we're not always excited or eager to hand over our email address. And so we have to have a reason for it to not only feel worth it, but to also make it exciting. Think of what your best performing content is and get creative on a way that you can create something extra special and aligned with that, that only your subscribers will receive and then announce and share that publicly. Invite people to join your email list and over deliver on that promise. Following this idea will not only help you grow your list, but make your subscribers loyal readers and engagers of your email content. Number five is personal check-ins. Another way to serve your list is through simple and personal check-ins. If you've earned a right inside of somebody's email inbox, that means that they likely trust you. What's an easy way for you to say hi or stay connected with them in order to continue building that trust? If you're only showing up to get something from them or to sell something, then you're missing this opportunity to connect. Be open and ask for feedback from your community. Open up the dialogue by asking, what do they want to see next? What's something that's missing currently from your content? Something they're wondering or they want answered. Use your emails as a tool to invite engagement and give space for someone to open up with you in conversation because these are the people who hopefully will eventually be buying from you. You should value their insight and comments and questions the most. If they collectively want to see more of something from you or are asking the same kinds of questions, it's up to you to respond with helpful content that meets them where they're at. As a side note, these kinds of personal check-ins are so, so, so important and valuable when you're pre-launching that period of time a few weeks before you open up a new program or launch a product. By asking questions and letting people know that they can simply hit reply or requesting feedback, you can start to get people excited about what's coming up as well as educate them, open their minds, and pivot your plans to ensure that you are serving them exactly where they are at and are creating with your valued subscribers in mind. Send out a survey, ask a question, let them know that you will respond back, give them a place to leave feedback or suggestions and allow their responses to guide your creation process. That time will come whenever you're openly announcing that you've created something or what's available for them to invest in, but use these check-ins as more of a way to gauge interest, garner excitement and drop breadcrumbs and hints of what they can expect from you in the weeks or months to come. There you have it. It is no surprise that email lists are one of my favorite topics of all time. And I love being able to help you find simple ways to support your list and build a deeper relationship with your audience. I mean, it's almost like I taught you how to host your own virtual cozy happy hour with your people, because honestly, who doesn't want to do that? Especially in these times when in-person happy hours are few and far in between. Serve your list first. Be the voice that they need to hear. Be that resource guide when they have questions and concerns. Be the tour guide of your own brand, sharing fun facts and educational content that you know they need. And hey, when all else fails and you can't rack your mind any longer to come up with something to send off in those off weeks, just send out a straightforward question and ask your list for feedback of what they want to see. Or better yet, simply send out a word of encouragement that you're craving, throw a gif into the message and brighten someone's day. Serving your email list does not have to be complicated, but it should be an extension of your brand and the conversations you start elsewhere on your blog, on social media, or in person. Continue these conversations and keep showing up as consistently as you possibly can. And I can all but promise that the next time you're ready to sell, your email list will be right there ready to support you. I hope today's episode leaves you feeling empowered to use your email list well. Until next time, gold diggers, keep on digging your biggest goals and hopefully I'll see you in the inbox. I'm over here giving you a virtual high five because you just finished another episode of the Gold Digger podcast. Did that go by way too fast for anyone else? If you want more, head over to golddiggerpodcast.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's sponsors. 
And if you're looking for a new crew of movers and shakers like you to bounce ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for gold diggers on Facebook. The link's waiting for you at golddiggerpodcast.com. 